Today we start our lesson in chapter 4 and we are in section 1.1, A Vast and Varied Land. In this unit lesson, we will learn about the continent of Africa and we will learn it by chapter in terms of sections and we will learn about north, west, east, and southern parts of Africa. Go ahead, have your textbooks ready or go to our website and from there, Clever, Cengage Learning and log in with your student credentials and go ahead, open unit two and we are in chapter four. Unit two is all about African civilizations and in chapter four, specifically section one, it's about North Africa. The objective of this lesson is to identify the Sahara and other landforms that characterize North Africa. And as for the essential question, what impact did trade and technology have on North and West Africa? Okay, so let's dig into today's lesson. So the Sahara is the defining landform in North Africa, meaning it is iconic, it is well known. So lesson 1.1 describes the Sahara as the basis for understanding the challenges of trade in the region. But before we get into the details, let's take a look at the review and assess questions. Number one, reading check. What major landforms are found in North Africa? So are you looking for landforms, mountains, well, desert, etc. Number two, identify main ideas and details. Why did North Africa develop independently from the rest of African continent? And hint, it has something to do with geography. It has something to do with their landforms. And number three, analyze cause and effect. What did the climate change have on geography and climate of the Sahara? Or how do you think the Sahara became the Sahara, the desert that we know today? North Africa has some of the most extreme topography in the world, including the Sahara dry for most of its history, the Sahara undergoes a humid period every 100,000 years. Variations in Earth's tilt and orbit cause changes in how the sunlight hits the planet. The humid period lasts about 5,000 years, followed by transition back to desert, which is its current state. The challenges of developing trade across its vast desert will be a recurring theme in this chapter. Now here's the thing about world maps. The way that some modern maps are drawn magnifies the size of countries in the northern hemisphere. So this projection disguises the huge scale of Africa which is larger than the United States, India, Europe, Japan, and China combined. So North Africa alone is a huge area that includes the Sahara, the world's largest desert. Now let's talk about Sahara. What does Sahara mean? In fact, the word Sahara is derived from the Arabic noun Sahra, meaning desert. Sahara is also related to the adjective Ashar, meaning desert-like, referring to a reddish color. So when we say Sahara desert, we are like saying desert, desert. Does that make sense? Because Sahara means desert. So what can be found in the Sahara? The Sahara is much more than just sand. In fact, the majority of Sahara is made of a barren rocky plateaus and as well as salt flats, sand dunes, mountains, and dry valleys. The rivers and streams found in Sahara are all seasonal apart from the river Nile. The Sahara is not all desert. There are over 20 lakes, most of which are saltwater lakes. Uh, lake Chad is the only freshwater uh, lake in the desert. Yes, it's from the country of Chad. So do people live in the Sahara? So the population of Sahara is just 2 million, but still, that's a lot. People who live in the Sahara are predominantly nomads, meaning they don't have a permanent settlement, who move from place to place depending on the seasons. Although there are very few who live in permanent communities near water sources. 
So this area of the continent of Africa has the following major landforms. Atlas Mountains, the Sahara, the Agar, the Tibesti Mountains are just, of the, just few of these major landforms of North Africa. North Africa developed independently because of the Sahara. The Sahara cut it off from the rest of the continent. And also we learned that time and change in the climate caused the Sahara's lakes, rivers, bodies of waters, and the grasslands to dry up and the soil to become unproductive, eventually creating tons, millions, or even billion metric tons of sand. What is more impressive and what we will look at is how nomads or people who lived in the area were able not just to survive but to thrive in this very challenging place. And uh, not only they survive but they thrive and they develop civilizations that we are still learning today. And a great portion of that influence the way we think and the way we behave in our time today. So that's how uh, people in North Africa influence not just the continent but the rest of the world. Go ahead, answer the review and assess questions. And if you were paying attention, you most likely noticed the answer to those questions were in this video as well.